Statistics reveal that almost 80% of small, medium and micro enterprises fail in their first year. The government wants to see small enterprises complying with both local and international standards and competing in those markets. This will help create conditions conducive to growth and at the same time, government wants to protect local enterprises from low quality cheap imports. And of course, to discuss this problem, we are joined by Professor Nicholas Bigpe. He is a development analyst from the Africa Growth Institute in Cape Town. And of course, he's a lecturer also at the University of Cape Town. And he joins us from our Sea Point Studios. And let's welcome you to our program. Good afternoon, Professor, and welcome. Thanks, thanks a lot. And uh, good afternoon to your listeners as well. All right. Let me ask you a generic, a generic question here. Why do small businesses fail? They fail for a number of reasons. Uh, normally, one of the most uh, common reasons is uh, lack of access to finance. But also, that for me is becoming more of a, uh, less of a challenge these days. Is, uh, I think the most critical one that I can have experienced over the years with a number of small businesses is actually training. And I think you mentioned that in your, in your, in your introduction. Uh, most people go into businesses without knowing where they want to go, what they want to do. Uh, they haven't studied the market. Uh, they sell apples because the next door never selling apples. They sell oranges because the other one is selling, but you don't have any actually done the survey. Uh, business is something that people have in their heart. Uh, if you just go in there because you're unemployed, that's not a, the right way forward. You must understand the environment in which the businesses operate, do your homework very well. And the money then becomes an issue. But the money issue is so most, most successful businesses started with no cash at all. So uh, the training and the interest is the key. But when, when these are missing, then uh, small businesses do collapse. Mm -hmm. Now, Professor, what is the secret recipe of a successful business? Because most of the time we hear that some people have very good ideas, very good business plans, and of course, an open access into the financing of the same project. But later, after a year or two, the businesses fail. So what is the secret recipe? The recipe is uh, passion. Uh, you know, there are always challenges in business. When you start, whether you are starting a business in your garage or you're starting it in, uh, in, on top of a mountain, the passion must be there. Uh, if the passion is not there, you're not going to succeed. And most people enter, that, as I mentioned, with lack of passion and also the direction. Uh, if you start a business, the business might be something that you, you start and then hit, hit a wall. Uh, but what do you do then? When you hit a wall, the successful business, if you fall down, or you fall backwards, and then what do you do? You get up and then get another way around it. A lot of people, when they hit a wall, they think that the world has collapsed, and then they suddenly stop. So the business also stops. So this is something, the passion, the direction, and also the ability to get up when you fall and then proceed. What it has been that uh, some black businesses have a problem with access to funding. Major commercial banks turn them down when they apply for funds. But on the other hand, we have uh, government agencies such as the IDC, Nzika Enterprise, SIDA, and the Umsobongvu Youth Fund uh, being put in place so that they can be able to help incubate these businesses so that they can be able to function very well. So is there a situation whereby we can be able to turn the situation around or rather uh, the challenges that the companies are facing around so that they can be able to thrive? Yeah, you mentioned very important government, government development finance institutions. And uh, I've worked with some of these institutions for a number of years, I'm talking around to, uh, 14, 15 years. And there is money. The South Africa is very lucky. Uh, the government actually does put aside money to support small business. They put aside money to help people into jobs. They put aside money for, to, to, to people into research. The problem normally is that uh, this is not marketed well enough for people to know. Uh, I must start my business in Limpopo, and then if I don't have access to uh, government people around me, then the business is not going to go very far. And But these institutions are well capitalized. Uh, the key is just to, and I've always said over the years, for, for the government to maybe speak a bit louder on what they can do to support these small businesses. Uh, there, are, there, are, there is a lot of sufficient capital in this country to support uh, our growing industry. And without a small business, let's be honest here, if we don't have that, then the growth that we talk about is not going to happen because the growth in any country, whether it's in Germany, Japan, is actually driven by small businesses. Professor, just very briefly before we end the interview, 
concern has always been that there is either competition amongst businesses themselves in terms of clientele. On the other hand, some businesses have to compete for the larger slice of cake in res irrespective of uh, the tenders if they are highly dependent on government business. So is it a question of cash flow or who you know and who you is connected with so that you should get business? Uh, it's, it's a combination of a lot of things. Uh, cash flow is always the thing. Cash flow starts when you start a business and get stranded. You know? But I see to, uh, you, you need initial capital first, and a lot of people just been battled to get the initial capital. Uh, you go to the bank, they give you the interest. The interest alone for a, a few, few months is probably more than the, the loan you are getting. So a lot of people with wonderful ideas just can move forward. Uh, in terms of us, and I did mention to you the, the amount of money that is available through the government. There are also other uh, bodies that actually supply funding, uh, not, not at very high uh, highly uh, uh, no, publicized like the development finance institution, but these are also there. And sometimes it's not, uh, when you have got a good idea, it's not about who you know. When you get a good idea and then approach a lending institution and they can see value in it, uh, more likely you are going to be funded. And also, as I mentioned, there, there are a number of government institutions that have a lot of money, millions and billions sitting there. But the key is to get a good, good, good proposal, a good business model. If you can take that, uh, there are CEDA offices in almost every, uh, every, every province. There are offices of, from IDC representing all, every, every province. So these are things that I think people starting business might learn to know about and then, also you, and then try and utilize that. But it's not necessarily who you know. It's just uh, the business concept might be solid for somebody to support you. All right. Thank you. Well, for now, I know you, uh, Professor. Thank you very much.